Hey guys and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Jeff Dahmer who was an American serial killer. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So in July 23rd of 1981, the police was doing an investigation about a guy that apparently had a body in his apartment or at least body parts. And it was actually Jeff's apartment and they actually did find at least 11 skulls in his apartment. During the investigation, his apartment was actually pretty normal looking. It had a little bit of urine smell and garbage, which is sometimes normal, I guess. Nothing out of the ordinary, except, the, of course, the body parts in the freezers that actually looked like burger patties. Jeffrey Dahmer was interviewed by the police for at least 66 hours, confessing how he did things, his first victim, details of what he did, and stuff like that. So basically, he starts telling the story about how he started in Ohio in the year 1978. Dahmer said that he was actually interested in finding someone, but he wasn't looking for anyone on the specific night that it happened. It was just happened it just happened to be the week where nobody was home and after he was driving home around 9 p.m. That's basically where he saw him. He had the perfect swim body type of guy whose name was Stephen Kicks. So Jeff stopped by the road and asked him if he wanted to smoke with him. And Stephen said, oh yes. So they go back to Jeff place and actually have some beers, but Jeff noticed that he actually was not gay, which was a big trigger for Jeff um, because of the fact that he was gay and it wasn't really spoken about in that year. And he said that he actually didn't know of anyone who was openly gay at that time. So as he's home drinking with Steven, he wonders how he's going to keep him home with him. And all he could think of was hitting him in the head and strangling him. Damn it, was just 18 and fresh out of high school when this happened. So after his first kill, he starts to wonder how he's going to get rid of the body. And all he came up with was basically cut it. And after he's doing it, he discovers that he's indeed enjoying it. And that's basically when his life changed forever and not necessarily for the better. In July 30th of 1991, the police was looking for evidence of how Dammer's first victim behind his family house. So they find teeth and other stuff and that's when the police decide to speak with his father and make him aware of what's happening and what Jeff has done. So his father was of course completely heartbroken and begging to describe his boy as a very happy and normal, especially when he was an infant who liked to just ride his bike and who was very much close to his grandparents and his parents. So when he told Jeff that he was getting a divorce after moving to Ohio, he reacted very badly and was pretty much hurt by it. His classmates from high school also described him as a very normal kid who was pretty laid low um, and later developed an addiction to alcohol. So he was pretty much drinking before, during and after school. And it wasn't at that point like a normal social drink. It was a problem. And he would pretty much drink anything that was around him. What's interesting and shocking to everybody is that Dammer has such a normal childhood. He wasn't like your typical kid who grew up in a bad neighborhood and just turns out to, you know, be bad and just follow down that path. Dammer actually had great parents, good friends was very outgoing he basically has such a good support system and it's like where did it fail like what happened the same jeff confessed that he would have been a normal kid who just went to college and probably did real estate but the thought in his head were more powerful than anything else when Dammer confessed of his crime it was almost like a weight had been lifted off his shoulder almost as if he wanted to set himself free for who he was after his first murder he moved in with his grandmother which he describes to be very loving and caring he started even going to church with her church with her sorry 
reading the Bible and controlling his intense thoughts for at least two years until he collapsed and he starts drinking again. And at that moment is when he starts getting arrested for public exhibitions, misconduct and stuff like that. Jeff was trying hard to control his sexual thoughts. So he proceeds to do other stuff like joining gay bars and anything that he would think would help him. In a way, Jeff was very happy. It was like he found a place where he didn't have to hide who he was. But after the bar closes around 4, they would go into something called the bathhouse, which is where they could have like sex and stuff. But obviously, Jeff wanted more and more and more time with them. And so he starts drugging the people that he wanted to have sex with. Something Jeff struggled with is that he did not see people as more than objects. So this bar was basically the place to make all of his fantasies come true. But one night, he gave too much medication for one of his victims and gets banned from the place. So after Damel Dammer is still trying to find a way to satisfy his needs without hurting anyone, so he thinks that a mannequin is going to be his answer, which he starts using for cuddles and pretending that it was a real person that he was having sex with. The one issue with that was that it did not satisfy him for a pretty long time. It was such like a short time answer for him. So he met a guy and they agreed to go to a hotel. They had sex and rubs and Jeff decided that he wanted to keep him. He gave him so much medication and accidentally drank some of it himself. So when he wakes up in the morning, he was laying next to him dead. He could not believe at that time that he had lost control and beating him to death. After that killing, Dammer basically starts to deteriorate. Um, so basically he starts thinking that maybe at that point he was born to kill or something like that. So he started killing and killing. It was never like an ending to it. It was not enough for him. So by mid-88, he had murdered four young people. There's one of his victims that already confessed what Dammer had do done to him so basically he says that he was getting out of the club he noticed that his car was not starting and Danner basically comes up to him and introduces him as Jeff and says that he if he was having issues with his car that he actually lived nearby and he did not have a problem with walking him home with him so that they could pick up his car and basically come back to the bar and just boost up his car. But when they got home, Dammer got really weird and started offering different things for him to drink until he finally says yes to Kofi. And a few minutes later, he just remembers falling on the ground and then waking up in the hospital without any answers. But when he went to the police, Dammer basically said that they were dating and they just had relationship problems. And of course, the police believed him. But his night activities were affecting his relationship with his family and so he had to move out. When he does, he gets a Polaroid camera in which he had over 85 pictures of 13 victims. As suspected, he noticed that the pictures were not as effective as having someone so he pays a guy $50 for some pictures and then drugs him but this time he was actually charged with second degree sexual assault to which he pleads guilty but while waiting for his sentence he kills again but his father basically writes a letter to the judge after finding out that Dammer had received no psychological help while in prison he was so heartbroken and just genuinely wanted to help his son and to be treated. Now, this is when it gets really bad. So basically after being released and moved into a new place, there was still this kind of emptiness in him. So basically he had gotten rid of all the bodies and he thought why not keep part of them with him. 
so I can remember them basically those were his exact words so he started keeping and eating the men by set later on he did not know what else to do with all the bodies he had so he had the idea of maybe putting them in a barrier with acid so that they can dissolve but at that point Dammer was down to at least one victim per week he definitely could not control himself anymore so he paid another guy to take pictures off but it got really weird because Zammer was saying things like oh I'll eat a piece of your heart and you'll be mine and you'll be a part of me and I'll be a part of you and so the guy hits Dammer in the head and manages to escape but as he's walking down the streets with handcuffs on two police officers stop him and he begins to explain himself the officer basically asks him to take him whatever the event had occurred and after getting to Dammer's place they find a knife under the bed as he had said that Dammer had a knife to him and he was threatening him and they also found a head with the mouth wide open in his refrigerator so Dammer's trial was very emotional for all of the families who were affected he never actually reacted to them yelling at him or anything of the source which was pretty weird at least for the family basically it was kind of like a way of him showing like he didn't care or that like he wasn't affected by it he did say at the end that it was never about him defending himself that he never wanted freedom if anything he just wanted death he was sentenced to 15 consecutive life term which is a total of 957 years in prison but in November 28th of 1994, he was beaten to death by a fellow inmate. Now, at least for me, in my opinion, this case is very sad. This whole story is sad because obviously there's people who are psychopath or sociopath or have like other issues where they hear voices and they just think of themselves as bad people or they just do bad things and they don't even think of it they don't even realize that they're doing bad things and so families do have to pay for it i do believe that maybe if Dammer would have thought of getting professional help instead of going to church the case would have been a lot different for himself and for the rest of the families which is really really sad but at least um, he did get a sentence that he deserved which is basically he was said to be in prison for the rest of his life obviously without parole um, even though yeah he was beaten to death and he didn't even get to do many years that he should have had all right so that is it for today's video guys if you're still here thank you so much for watching i hope you're staying safe during these hard times okay bye